Lately, uh, I don't know that we've stopped it all year. And stopping the run is really an attitude first. So that's what the coach has to teach, the attitude of you're not going to run the ball. And then after that, everybody has to know where to fit. And then after that, they have to be willing to strike and get off blocks. And then after that, you have to get numbers to the ball. So right now, we do none of that consistently, and we give up too many big plays. And therefore, the rushing numbers are outrageous. Well, I thought their movement was good, and we knew, you know, they have a good front. You know, we saw them. I saw them last year when I was at Louisville. They do have a good front, and uh, you know, they move the front. And so, you just have to be able to balance it out with the pass. You're not going to be able to run the ball all day consistently against their defensive front, but you have to hang in there, and you have to attempt to run the ball, and then you have to throw the ball. I think all stats can be misleading. You know, they really can. And there's some issues there mechanically that he needs to fix. The numbers are decent. They are what they are. But uh, we, you know, uh, for his first, and let's not misconstrue this. I don't believe this is Kyle's first time playing Division One football in the game. So uh, there are just some mechanical issues that we need to correct. Uh, but he gave a good effort, and he has good numbers. What were some of the causes of their uh, big plays early on, and what were some of the things you did to you know, we just come out, and I don't know if somebody's waiting for someone else to make a play or what the issue is. Uh, we just have to keep hammering, but as you can probably tell by the tone of my voice, uh, I'm frustrated with the run defense. I'm frustrated really with the defense, period. I mean, it's ridiculous. The way we play defense here is a travesty. So what we have to do is look at ourselves as a staff and figure out how to get this thing fixed. And I don't think it's all on the players. I think it's coaches and everybody involved with it, myself included. I wouldn't say there's some regression. I would say that we have to play at a level that allows you to be successful all the time. And until we do that, we're not going to win. And we don't do that. We do it for spurts, but we don't do it consistently. So that is the challenge right now, and obviously to me that is the frustration. Some of the running games in the mechanics of the tailback too, but is it also in the offensive line? Is there mechanics a little? I don't know what you're talking about. I never mentioned the running back's mechanics. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying from my perspective that they have to have the right mechanics too. Who? The tailbacks. Of the I, I wish I knew what you meant by that. I don't know what you mean. You're telling us that the running, the quarterback has to have mechanics. And my question In terms of managing the game, yes. Managing the game. The running back also needs mechanics. We're looking at the holes that are produced by the mechanics of the Offensive line. I'm going to ask for the next question, please. I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. I'm not, no offense to you. I don't understand the question. Next. Uh, you guys gave up 14 points in the first quarter. Um, do you think it's a problem with the team coming out flat, maybe? I do. And, I, you know, we just have to address it. And we have to, you know, I just addressed it for about 20 minutes. If I could solve that problem, I'd be a happy man right now. But, you know, I'm, uh, you know to be honest with you, I never met a winner that was a great loser. So to be honest with you, I'm not a good loser. Just being honest. I'm, I'm tired of it at this point, to be honest with you. You said some of this may be on the coaches. What do you guys need to do this week? Well, we need to make sure that we address the issues. If the issue is we're coming out flat, then maybe we need to practice, starting off practice with practicing enthusiasm. I don't know, but, but trust me, believe me, we'll get it corrected this week. So do you think uh, defensively it was more the energy they came out with rather than? Well, you tell me. They scored 21 points in the first half, and that was it three in the second? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Coach, does it make it, uh, make it any more difficult to swallow coming off a bye week and having that extra? No, it's all, losing is losing. It's, it's the same to me. So it, whether, uh, you know, it's all diff always difficult to swallow, always. And once you become accustomed to it and it's easy to swallow, you can fill in the planks. How big was that fumble when they bumped that punt 7-5? Well, every play is big, and you don't know which play is going to be the determining play in the game. But, 
you know, you make that play, you don't turn the ball over down there, or you score when you get a chance, and so on and so forth. So I, I would never single single out one single play, although uh, there are times when it's obvious that one play turns the game. But uh, there are a lot of plays, and, and if you really understand the no, game, the uh, missed opportunities are probably the biggest plays, to be honest with you. We we did it. You know, we're coming along on special teams. We are coming along. along. Uh, so um, I was happy with the teams uh, for the most part. Um, and but our inability to sum it up, since you want me to do so, I will. Our inability to score when we need to score, okay, and take advantage of field position, and to eliminate big plays is really really uh, hamstringing our team. That's the reality of it. And a function of that, particularly defensively, is you have to play this game with great emotion and enthusiasm, and we do not seem to be able to do that for four quarters. Any further questions? Thank you.